So uh, I wanted, I'm, I'm, I'm usually used to give um, uh, scientific talks, talks about my, my work. So this is my first that I get to talk about uh, my career, about my past and my uh, success and my, and my failures. So that's very, very, very weird for me. So I hope it's okay. Um, so let's start um, a, a little bit of, of my outline and motivation of this talk. So I've been eight years in academia, counting since I started my PhD. And I've been working uh, from the theory side uh, in, in quantum technologies. So uh, most recently, I've been focusing on uh, large-scale quantum computing and fault-tolerant quantum computing, something that it still seems science fiction, because as you know, we are still far, far, far away for having, from having the, the enough amount of qubits to be able to um, develop fault-tolerant and large-scale quantum computers. So that's a little bit uh, futuristic, but it's a very exciting work. And on the other side, on the contrary, I've been also working on trying to find applications, uh, useful applications uh, uh, for niche device, for small, uh, small scale devices, which is something that we already have. So this is a very important uh, work that uh, the community is focusing on, trying to find the first um, toy models and child applications of the first prototype of, of quantum devices or quantum computers, if you like. Um, but in this talk, as I said, I don't want to talk about the uh, technical part because I, I, I'm, I think the audience might be very diverse and I don't, want, I don't think I have time to go into detail uh, and, and give a, a fair introduction of my work. So uh, let's for now leave the technical details aside and let's get out from my comfort zone. Why I'm saying this? Because when I was asked to give this talk, I was actually struggling to decide uh, which topic, which messages I wanted to put out and take advantage of this opportunity. And I immediately thought about a few things that I wanted to talk about, but I immediately said, felt uncomfortable about talking about this. And the reason why I'm going to talk about this is because that made me feel uncomfortable. And I think it's important very often to get out of your comfort zone and talk about things that might um, have hurt you in, in your career. And what I wanted to talk today is about, um, first of all, about my past, my whole, my whole path in, in, in the field, and then about uh, the experiences and the moments where I almost uh, decided to drop uh, my career and do something else. So let me very quickly go. Okay. So as you as you may know, the ones that have been in academia, academia has uh, a lot of amazing things and amazing uh, um, uh, opportunities and, and, and pros, but it also has their cons. So a lot of people drop academia for the struggle and the sacrifices that in my, in my suppose to, to their personal lives are like, for instance, it's very difficult to manage, to have a proper life work uh, management when you are doing a PhD or when you are trying to, uh, uh, arrive to the, to, 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 to the opportunity of finding your first permanent position as a as a professor, it takes many 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 years, and those are reasons why a lot of people drop their careers because it's actually a a, a difficult race, and it's not easy at all to uh, uh, establish uh, oneself in academia. But those are not the reasons why I almost dropped out. And the the reasons the, the main reasons why I, why I actually considered doing so was first the imposter syndrome that was coming from from uh, uh, my background from coming from a different field and that's something that I'm going to introduce very shortly and I also want to explain how that became something very good so how the imposter syndrome uh, became uh, something that actually played an advantage in my career. And second, I think I want to talk about is uh, how 
uh, encountering situations uh, uh, that uh, were related to gender harassment at the workplace also made me uh, uh, seriously consider quitting. And also how that changed my perspective on feminism and uh, on the importance of uh, taking care of these issues in, in our field, both in academia and both in quantum technologies. And the reason why I thought that it was a good idea to focus my talk on these uh, experiences, on these um, hurdles, is because I believe that success also comes from overcoming hurdles. And it's, it's important to communicate this to the audience because if there's somebody in the audience that has been uh, encountering himself or herself in one of these uh, situations, I hope this uh, uh, gives to this person some hope that uh, this type of things can be overcome and actually can uh, help you grow very much in your, in your career. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to give now uh, uh, an introduction of what my path is so, and, and where, I, where, I, where do I come from. So I'm, I'm from Mallorca, I'm from Spain. It's a little island in the Mediterranean. And in, in Mallorca, I did my first, my first degree in chemistry. That was a five years degree uh, um, that I had the luck to, to, to be able to go to, to my last one in, in the USA, in Ohio, at Miami University. Uh, my, my years as a chemist uh, were, as a, as a chemistry student, were very, very exciting. But unfortunately, as a lot of people, as, as happened with a lot of people, I was not entirely happy with my decision. Uh, we often have to choose our degrees and our careers very early in time, and maybe sometimes we are not ready to make such a, a, a life-changing decision. So I chose chemistry, and I soon realized that that was not my thing. Uh, fortunately, in my department, uh, we had a, a, a group that was doing uh, physical chemistry and was focusing on uh, theoretical chemistry, which is basically uh, quantum chemistry. And that was my first introduction, introduction into quantum. And by joining this group to do some uh, collaboration as a student, I, I slowly start moving. I set up my uh, starting point on my uh, path on, on quantum technologies. And because I realized quantum was something that really, really interested me, I decided to pursue a master's degree, a, a, an inter-European -Euro master's degree in quantum chemistry and computational modeling. And that was the first moment that I, I, I got in touch with computers. So quantum was before, and then I, I started, uh, gaining, I started gaining interest in, into computers, into programming, into, uh, uh, architecture, into compilers, into all these type of things. And I decided, um, after my first year, first year of masters, I decided to simultaneously join uh, and, and a different university to do, uh, to parallelly do a, a degree in computer engineering. And that's what uh, put the ingredients on my plate. So now we have a bit of quantum and now we have a bit of computers. And um, as I said, we, we, are ne we, we tend to be sometimes too young to decide what, what we want to do. And you have to slowly find your, your your path, and uh, it's something that builds in, in my opinion, and in my case, it was exactly that. And uh, having these two ingredients, I found um, the exciting world of quantum computers and quantum information. And I, I went crazy around uh, websites and uh, about uh, different um, uh, mailing lists, by trying to find a PhD. I found a PhD in, in, in one of these technologies. And I did, I did find in, in, in England, in York, at the University of York, I did find a PhD in, in quantum technologies uh, under the supervision of two amazing uh, um, supervisors, Timothy Spiller and Irene Damiku. And that was my first serious research work on, on, on quantum technologies. Uh, after that, shortly after I finished my PhD, I, I decided to move to Tokyo, 
which has been a, an amazing experience to live in, in Japan. And I moved there as a postdoc, uh, a postdoc researcher at the National Institute of Informatics. The National Institute of Informatics is a, is a, a national center that is dedicated to the research of informatics. And so basically it's fully computer science, but our group, uh, we have a small group that focuses on um, theoretical quantum computing and quantum information. In the meantime, I've also been keeping my collaborations at the University of York as a visiting researcher and as a supervisor of uh, students. Every year I, 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 I love uh, mentoring and I love supervising uh, undergrad, masters and, and PhD students. Okay, so the first, I, I'm going to now introduce my first hurdle, my first um, difficulty, my first obstacle in my career, and it's my imposter syndrome. And I try to analyze, I try to think about, a little bit about where does it come from. Uh, I think you had a talk yesterday about this. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend, but I think the fact that there are talks and there are people talking about this is because it's more common than we think. And it's interesting, it's so interesting to see where, to ask oneself, well, why does that happen to me? Where does it come from? And I try to analyze this a little bit. So from my pre-PhD um, years, I, I was never a science kid. I was never uh, some one of these genius kids that loves, um, that's very good in math, very good in physics, love doing chemistry experiments. I was not like that. I was more of a humanities and artsy person. I did not stand out very much in science in high school. Actually, my physics professor um, once told me that I should never, never, never study science at university because I was not good enough, funnily enough. And also, I, I was very, very, very focused that I wanted to be a veterinarian at university. I did not want to do uh, physics or chemistry or anything so, so, so uh, purely science. Because I never thought I would be, I would be good enough, probably because of the, of the, of the feedback I had from my, from my teacher. And also, as I said before, when I was doing my, my first um, degree as chemist, that didn't motivate me. And I thought that maybe there's something uh, wrong with me. Maybe it doesn't motivate me because I'm, I'm not good enough or I just don't feel the, this drive that a lot of people feel about science. During my PhD, uh, the imposter syndrome came, came from a different point and it was because I realized that Everyone was a physicist in the field. So I really, really, really wanted to be uh, 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 working on quantum tech. And I was very, very, very excited to have had the chance to find a PhD for that. And finally having this drive of doing something. But I was not a physicist. And I felt, felt very, very, very um, weak and, and not good enough because of that. And also everybody, again, seemed to me a genius of genius physicist. And from my post PhD, after my PhD, my imposter syndrome was coming from the feeling that I'm not an expert, that I know a little bit of many things, but I'm not an expert on a whole thing. And that made me wonder what is my place. And that was something that really, really made me consider dropping my career and changing totally my, my job. But fortunately, I just recently found um, I was I was offered the, an amazing opportunity at Kilimanjaro that uh, made me decide to jump into industry. Kilimanjaro is a is a quantum technology startup that has been very recently funded, and um, they uh, showed me how my skills that the the fact that my skills were so diverse from chemistry to computer science to physics was actually some an advantage in 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 the in the industry world um, this type of startup was uh, uh, focusing on on is focusing on having a full stack 
uh, uh, time to market focus uh, to develop a coherent quantum enabling platform to allow companies to be uh, ready for the quantum era as soon as possible. And that uh, allows me to put all my skills into function to identify applications in chemistry, in computer science, in physics, and, and everything that I've learned during my academic uh, career allows me to, 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 to be good at it. And that doesn't, doesn't even ask me to give up academia because given that it's a spin-off from different research centers in Barcelona, I get to keep engaging with the community, publishing papers, and so on. So quantum technology, the, the first message I wanted to deliver is that quantum technology has become a multidisciplinary field by definition. So it's not physics anymore. It's chemistry, it's engineering, it's computer science, it's business, and, and so many other things. So it's, it's a very important thing that to, to remember that while your past might set the roots uh, on the ground, you can always transplant them and move around, and that's okay. And uh, very quickly, because I don't think I have much time, I wanted to comment on uh, the second hard look that I had in, in my career, and, and it's uh, encountering gender harassment at the workplace. Unfortunately, uh, quantum tech and uh, uh, physics and chemistry and so many other disciplines are still very highly populated by male, and women sometimes encounter very unpleasant situations. Um, and on contrary, Contrary to what I saw before, I thought uh, that was something in existing in the field that was that there were very isolated cases and those situations were very easy to overcome. Nevertheless, what I learned after having these situations uh, happening to myself is that these things do happen and do create a lot of inequalities. They have a major impact in daily life and uh, how important it is to not feel alone and to have some sense of community and that's why i really appreciate that this type of uh, events are happening more more and more and also the importance of having protocols of action at different universities at different countries with startups companies that's very very important and of course to speak up and to talk about this with with your co-workers with your uh, human resources with anyone that can help you so my last message is, was that it's fundamental to encourage new generations of women to join quantum science and technology, but also I think it's very, very, very important to support and protect them so we avoid them uh, dropping their careers. And with this, I want to thank you very much for listening and give you my address if you ever want to talk about any of the situations happening to you and you want to share any experiences.